So within this topic, let's take a closer look at the bucket uh, as, uh, that sits at the bottom as part of our analogy. Well, that's really to do with how we organize our architectural building blocks. All right, so as we deal with this bottom layer at the bottom, which is the bucket, Togo refers to that as the uh, enterprise continuum. And uh, it's a bit of a long word, really just for a big box that has different ways of categorizing the, the information that goes in it. And what it's broken down into, okay, so what we have here, let's just call this the enterprise continuum. I'm just gonna do this so that you understand. And what we have in the top layer is we have what's called the architecture continuum. All right. And in the bottom here, we have what's called the solution continuum. Now really, all that this means is that up at the, to at the top here, I define what is referred to as logical aspects. So it'll be customer relationship management. All right. Whereas down at the bottom here, I'll, def I'll define the actual solution to that. So it will be a SAP CRM solution, or it will be uh, Joe, Bo Joe Bloggs running the Acme process integration company. They're going to manage all of our customer r r requirements. So the bottom layer here is all to do with solution, and the top layer is all to do with sort of a, a high level or logical definition of that block. So when we refer to building blocks, TOGAF breaks those building blocks into two categories. Up top here, are all of your architecture building blocks because they belong in the architecture continuum. And down here, in this section here, we have what are referred to as solution building blocks. So remember that big pile of Lego blocks we spoke about sitting on the side? Well, now we've taken some of those and we've said, ah, well, all of these are red, all right? So we put them up in the red layer and all of these are blue, so we're putting them down in the blue layer. So that's your first level of categorization. Then, this little box is broken up into what's called a vertical section. And over here, you have what's referred to as foundation architectures. All right. And really what's sitting in here is, is, is a fairly high level view of how we can group some of those building blocks together. In other words, build some pre-built parts. So there might be a little bit of a fender or maybe a wheel, a Lego wheel with a hub in it with a tire already around it. And what that's talking about is a movement from this side here all the way through from the general to the specific. So we, as we move further along the spectrum, or this continuum as it's called, we become more and more specific. So we start with this foundation level right up at the top. And for example, um, it could be at a business level a value chain model. Right? Or it could be, uh, if we take our car analogy a little further, uh, it's probably um, a, a bit of sheet metal with some you know, stuff imprinted on top of it. Right? Now we move a little further on, and we get into this space here. Right, and this is referred to as the common systems architecture, or we could just call it the common architecture. Now what we're doing is we're taking the generic stuff, and we're starting to make it a little more specific. So here, for example, we might have um, a, a, a value chain model. And here, for example, we might have HR processes, for example. So we, we, we're making it more and more specific. So let's take our car analogy. Arch foundation architecture was a very specific piece of shaped metal or sheet metal. We then took that and we shaped it into a specific bumper. Right? And now the bumper is sitting in this one. So this is almost like your pick shelf, somewhere where you, you, you work on it and you take it and you put it on the pick shelf and it's going to be assembled later. The next, the next level is called an industry architecture. All right? And this is now where I can go and I can acquire a certain architectures that are readily available in the market. In other words, I don't have to reinvent the wheels. So I can go and get a financial uh, architecture from an open group like Beyond. Uh, I can get a supply chain one from the supply chain council. So there's different industry-based um, architectures that I can acquire, buy, or just you know, some of them are free that I can use. And then I can build on those pieces. And with the car analogy, that's really equivalent to now taking that bumper and stamping it with, a, this is a Jeep a front bumper for a four by four you know, going through the jungle scenario. So as if you're adding a little more, a little more context each, each time you work through that. And then finally, you have what's referred to as your organizational um, architectures. And this is means now I've taken all of this relevant information, it's very general, and I've shaped it into HR, I've shaped it, and I've shaped it, and I've shaped it further and further, till eventually I arrive with my organizational architecture. That's what I've done with the car. I've taken a piece of metal, and I've shaped it, I've shaped it, I've made it into something that's more specific, and now it's a Jeep one, now it's specific to my organization, and it's maybe got my unique branding all over it. And that's the architecture continuum at the top. 
only difference between the top and the bottom right, is this is the solutions continuum. So this really says, um, th this talks about foundation solutions. Right? Uh, this one will talk about common solutions. This one will talk about industry solutions. And this one will talk about organi uh, organizational solutions. And that's really the difference between these two specific layers. And that's what we refer to as the continuum. It's sort of a logical way of looking at all of the information in your architectural realm and organizing it. So we've taken that big, messed up you know, collection of Lego pieces, and we've kind of thrown them in here, and we've categorized them through this whole continuum. And we now have a better understanding of where we can find stuff in a more effective manner. So within this enterprise continuum, it's important to remember that you can take this continuum and you can put it into your repository, in other words, a database, and how you can store and collect your data. What, what's also important is that TOGAF does provide you with some frameworks that you can use. So over here, they've given you what's referred to as the TRM, which is the Technical Reference Model. And you can look at that as part of your additional resources to get some more information on that. And over here, they've got the Triple IRM, which is the Integrated Information Infrastructure Reference Model. And really, that's quite a big mouthful just for a way to try and describe how you look at developing, operating, managing, running and uh, parts of your uh, technology infrastructure. And then on this side over here, uh, you've got the industry ones. And just as an example, on your screen now, there's the SCORE model which is the Supply Chain Operations Reference Model. And that's an industry-based reference model specifically designed for uh, the supply chain um, uh, industry. And, and you can apply that to your organization as well. Now, that's just a, it's a very high-level view of some of the models that are readily available for you to use. Now, what's important also to realize within this, this, this bucket of this collection, this categorization, is that the Lego blocks that I put in here, they have to connect to one another. And therefore, something must define, number one, well, is that a red le Lego block? And can a red Lego block connect with a blue Lego block? Or can this shape Lego block connect to this shape Lego block? And, and there's a little instruction set um, that one uses for that. And that's called the architecture content framework. In other words, that explains certain content and how that content relates to another and how it fits together. And really, all that that means is all the building blocks in here must relate to that content framework. So you can say, well, there's blue and there's red, and this is how they all plug together. And we'll deal with that within our next topic.